for essentially my whole career, I've had friends, I had family members, I had buying clients of mine tell me that they're going to hold off purchasing their next home for the next market crash or for prices to correct themselves. And the thing is, during the same time during my career, the prices have done the exact opposite. They have gone nothing but up. And the question is, is this market going to crash now? Is this the time? And this is a question I'm getting a lot more now than I ever did before. And it's really fueled by the fact that homes have appreciated so much over the last year that people are having a hard time swallowing that a house they could have bought last year for 400,000 is now going for 450 this year. So they're really hoping that they can buy the same house at yesterday's prices with a market crash. And the thing is, is this even plausible? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about. now. I wanted to make this video to provide, provide a little clarification and so you can make the best decision for you and your family and this is all information that's backed by real data and uh, from real experts people are way smarter than i am doing real research and real analytical approaches this isn't what your friends will speculate over a few beers at the bar this isn't what your neighbor your retired neighbor has hunches on this is just real world information and a little disclaimer a little bit honest disclaimer this could come out to be inaccurate. I don't think it will. This is backed by real information, but just in case, hey, you know, we could be wrong here. All right, so the, what I wanna start with this graph here, this graph represents the US housing prices since 1960s. And you'll notice something, right? It has progressively and aggressively risen with very few declines or crashes to note. Really, there was just one. And that's the thing. Many of us remember this great market crash because it was a relatively uh, recent time, a recent memory, and the corresponding great recession. And we hang our hats that this could happen again. And the truth is the forces that were at play then are not the forces that are in play today. And let's just imagine that they were. Let's just imagine if you, if you take a look at this graph and you bought at the height of, of the market and then the market crashed, if you just waited 10 years, less than a decade, then you can see that the prices have appreciated back to the pre-crash levels. And if you held on longer, you saw that you had gained more equity in your property. So stop worrying about that. But let's, but I did mention that things were different before. So let's, let's talk about why. Well, there are a number of reasons, but the most notable one for this particular video is that there was a ton of artificial appreciation of home values due to predatory lending practices essentially what banks were doing were giving out mortgages to anyone who wanted one you simply had to state your income in other words you didn't have to provide verification that you could afford it and what naturally happened is all these people who purchased homes that they couldn't afford defaulted and because they defaulted rather quickly there was not enough equity built in their home for them to sell it and this really spurred the heavy foreclosure and short sale market in the great recession again there's a number of factors in place of the economy the economics is a lot more complicated than that but for the purpose of this video um, that's basically what happened so today it's different because it's much harder to obtain a mortgage with new laws that are in place so only much more qualified buyers who are vetted uh, a lot heavier than they were before are able to obtain a mortgage and what so what happens is that there's less people defaulting on their loans and even if they did if you look at this graph that's right here you'll notice that we had the most housing equity than we ever had in u.s history so if they did default they had these homeowners will have enough equity to sell their property that's why it's not going to happen again however what is going to happen is there's going to be a deceleration of appreciation or in other words prices are going to increase much slower than before now let me back up real quick if you just hear that quickly and you hear deceleration you might naturally think of decline in pricing and that's not what's going to happen at all prices are still going to go up just a lot slower than they did before and according to pulsenomics and keeping current matters the experts predict that in 2022 prices will still increase by 5.82 percent that's a drop from what happened in 2021 at 18 to 19.7 percent and the reason why it's not dead on is because this year is not over at the time of this video and then further on over the next few years after that between 20 2023 through 2025 each year they'll continue to rise for three and a half to four percent respectively per year but why the decline in appreciation well it's because there are a few factors that experts believe will create more housing inventory in other words there'll be more homes available to purchase and when you increase the available supplies of homes we naturally reduce the amount of demand for each listing or a new home and that slows down the acceleration of the home pricing the home prices but here are the four reasons that the experts uh, believe that the housing inventory will increase. Now, the first one is because as more people get vaccinated or the people who are vaccinated get their boosters or as people get their kids vaccinated, a lot more people are going to be more comfortable having other people in their home and they're willing to put the house on the market. The second one would be that new construction will ramp up again uh, due to labor, lumber, lumber and supply chain shortages. 
or issues that builders had. They had to slow down the production of new homes, and this is expected to be corrected or eased over the next few years, providing more housing options. Number three, and this was noted in Keeping Current Matters, they have a monthly report that's, you know, ironically called their um, market monthly report, which has an extensive article of what's going to happen at the end of forbearance for the homeowners in forbearance. And essentially, if they're not in the position to, to pay their mortgages, the thing is, as we mentioned before, they have equity in their home now so they can afford to sell it as opposed to slip into foreclosure. So that's going to add more houses to the market. And the fourth is going to be interest rates. Interest rates are going to increase. That's just naturally going to happen. And all the experts agree, agree that this is going to occur. So any buyer that is buying a home via a mortgage can buy less of a home that they wanted to because it costs more money for, the, for that house. So less home, there might be some home buyers who drop out of the market or be less competitive in the market that you may be in. And then voila, appreciation dips, be it the prices are still going to rise. Now we can dive in much deeper, but I think you get the point. So let's wrap it up with this summary. If you're on the fence about buying a house because you're either hopeful or fearful that the market's going to crash, well, don't. This is the same stuff I've been hearing my whole career and it hasn't happened yet. And I personally know people who would have, could have, and should have bought 10 years ago and did it, and they regret the decision of not doing so to this day. So don't make the same mistakes that they did. And I want to put out a couple more points out there that let's imagine the market did crash hypothetically. Well, as we saw previously in the previous graph uh, in this video, that it's going to rebound just fine. So in the long term, you'll be okay. Second, you might end up paying more on your monthly payment if you're buying a house with a mortgage because the interest rates are going to go up, although the price is hypothetically decreased. For example, a house today for $600,000 at today's rate at the time of this recording at around 3.18% with 10% down, your principal and interest payment would be approximately $2,790. The same house for $500,000 with an increased rate of 4.5%. You, uh, in 10% down, your principal and interest payment will approximately be, be $2,810, saving you nothing but possibly wasting you years of happiness and memories in your new home. So with that, I want to thank you for your time today. I know it's valuable. My name is Chris Cusimano. I'm the team lead at the Homes by Cousy team. And if you're thinking of buying or selling a home in the Southeast uh, Florida market, by all means, reach out to our team. We'll love to help you and we'll see you around.